Throughout most of the 19th century, the wristwatch was a piece of jewelry worn by women. Men carried pocket watches. It was during the Boer War in 1899 that British soldiers decided fumbling around for a pocket watch during battle was a serious waste of time. The tools of the trade haven't changed much since pocket watches ruled the day. In this Swiss workshop, the mechanisms are meticulously handcrafted, just like they were centuries ago. The watchmaker starts by polishing parts to a mirror finish. He mixes lavender and almond oils with a diamond paste. He extracts a part called the cage from its storage solution, sets it in the paste, and polishes it against a zinc block. He brushes the dust off the cage with a soft piece of wood. Another watchmaker polishes its edges, removing tiny bits of material so other parts can fit to it. The technician attaches gears to the cage. These gears are the balance and escape wheels. He fixes the gears on tiny rubies because they don't wear down easily. The second half of the cage completes this mechanism called the tourbillon. Invented in 1789, these rotating gears in a cage counteract the effect of gravity on timekeeping for more accurate results. The watchmaker now magnifies the assembly and projects the image onto a screen to confirm that the gears and levers are interacting correctly. Next, he secures a wound-up spring in a barrel. This is the main spring that powers the gears of the watch. He dips a pin in some grease and uses it to lubricate the spring. Then he caps the main spring with a cover and tamps it down with a special tool. He carefully positions the barrel in its slot on the main plate. The watchmaker now installs another series of gears on the main plate. They'll transfer power from the spring to the tourbillon. He attaches a bridge to the gears to act as a pivot as they turn. Another spot of grease keeps these wheels turning efficiently. With the spring barrel and its transmission gears assembled, production now reaches a critical moment. He places the mechanism in a holder that makes it easier to install the tourbillon. It's a tricky job. The cage must be precisely positioned for its gears to receive power from the spring. He now transfers the mechanism to another holder to insert the winding stem. Next, he engraves a circular pattern onto a bridge plate. This high-end finish is called purlage. The technician attaches the textured bridge to the dial side of the watch. He assembles more gears and a numbered wheel to the bridge. These gears will provide the date information for this timepiece. Another bridge secures the gears that lead to the date wheel. He fastens it with tiny screws. He slides the second date wheel onto its axle and checks the setting mechanism. Coming up next, we'll have up to the minute details as this watch gets a beautiful face. Even in the
the age of digital and electronic wristwatches, the mechanical watch has an appeal that's timeless. Some are among the most complex in the world and can cost in the six-figure range. At that price, time is truly a luxury. In a factory nestled in the scenic Swiss countryside, a highly skilled team has assembled the inner workings of a luxurious tourbillon wristwatch. Now a watchmaker fits the handcrafted face onto the mechanisms. Using a special tool, he presses the hands onto an axle at the center of the watch. This enables him to set the time and date. The watch will be encased with 18 karat red gold bezels sealed against the elements with rubber rings. He now fastens the middle casing to the mechanism, then completes the installation of the winding stem and crown. The watchmaker lubricates the bridge for the auto winding system, then engraves a parallel ribbed pattern onto it. This adds visual interest to the bridge, making this luxury watch look good inside and out. After the bridge has been set with jewels, it's ready to be installed at the center of the watch, where its jewels will keep parts from rubbing against each other, causing wear and tear. An artist now engraves the rotor that's to be attached to the bridge. It's this part that will automatically wind the watch. It's a signature piece that can reflect the customer's individual taste. This stylish looking rotor is now ready to be secured to the bridge. Once installed, even the slightest movement will cause this rotor to oscillate, and that action winds up the mainspring of the watch. The watchmaker now shields this timepiece with a glass dome, and then vacuums dust from the next gold bezel. He carefully cleans this clear sapphire window because even the tiniest speck of dirt could cause the watch to fail. He snaps the front bezel onto the watch, then using a special device, he presses the bezel to secure it. This action also squeezes the rubber ring between the bezel and the watch to create a waterproof seal. This watch will now be water resistant to a depth of up to 100 meters. The back casing screws into place so it can be removed for maintenance work during the life of the watch. Using a special tool, he tightens the casing to just the right tension. He then inspects the watch to confirm that the rotor moves freely within the case. Next up is a computer analysis of the mechanism. A device holds the watch and simulates wrist movement, while the computer evaluates its accuracy. That's the sound of a minute repeater, which is a feature on some models. When triggered, it chimes the time. And now, this watch takes the plunge into a container of water. If bubbles appear, it would signify a leak. But there are none, so this watch is waterproof. This incredible watch will set you back $150,000. But it will be an heirloom piece that stands the test of time.